Welcome back to another episode of the Girls Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. I am here to bring you the information and the conversations to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today we have a special business spotlight episode where I get to introduce you to a bomb black owned, woman owned business and the brains behind that business, Letitia Styles. So Letitia is a speaker, author, coach and online marketing certified professional. She's the founder and CEO of You've Got Clients. That's trademarked y'all, so don't play with it, okay? She's the author of the forthcoming book, Assume the Throne, Four Steps to Unlock Your True Identity and Power as a Leader. To her audience of over 88,000 subscribers, followers, and regular viewers, she provides tips, guidance, and insights on marketing, branding, content creation, mindset, and more. Her work has been featured in notable publications, including Forbes, Fast Company, and Business Insider. Letitia, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. This is your first <laughs> in-person talk show, because y'all know we yeah. are stepping into talk show and leaving podcasts behind. I got to work on my new intro, though. So in the meantime, we are claiming this to be a talk show. So welcome <laughs> to the couch. Oh, I love it. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to talk to you. I think the topic of today's conversation um, is gonna be very helpful when it comes to mindset, mm -hmm. um, dealing with limiting beliefs, dealing with imposter syndrome. 99.99999% mm -hmm. of my audience is black women and a lot of us, I'm willing to even say like the majority of black women, especially in the entrepreneur space, mm -hmm. struggle a lot of times with self-worth um, and mindset, like really knowing your worth and not only knowing it for yourself, but knowing it and believing in it so much that you're able to transfer that belief to other people. Yep, absolutely. Um, so let's just take it back though, because in doing my research for this mm -hmm. conversation, one of the blogs on your website, I think talked about you being a college dropout. Um, I actually graduated into the Great Recession. Okay, okay. So you put some respect on your name because you did graduate college. I did twice. <laughs> Am I tripping? So I had two degrees but I couldn't get hired. Got you, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So t talk to us about that experience because these days mm -hmm. the conversation is coming up and I know you're a mom, so I do wanna ask you about like your belief in college mm -hmm. and like the path that you wanna send your kids down. But with so many of us coming out of college with no opportunities or with yeah. opportunities that did not add up to what they needed to add up for that debt to make mm -hmm. sense, that's a big topic of conversation. So. Tell us about your experience. Yeah, so honestly, when I graduated the very first time, I got a Spanish degree. So it was because Girl, what I was did you what was you gonna do? What was you gonna do with it? What was your like if everything had worked out, what would you have done with your Spanish degree? I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Gotcha. I still didn't know. I was forced to choose a major. So when I went to my counselor, she said, Okay, you're coming up on your sophomore year. If you don't choose a major, you can't continue in college. So I said, Okay, well I guess I like Spanish, so I'm just gonna choose it. And I think that's kind of been a recurring theme in my life, which is I've never really fit into a box. Mm -hmm. I've never really fit into any sort of predetermined path. And I've always been essentially trying to choose my own path. So after I graduated with the Spanish degree, um, I just started working in retail because I was already in retail. So I ended up you know, working full time in retail and uh, ended up going back to school for a more traditional degree. So I went back to school for a master's of accounting and realized I didn't like accounting at all, um, but I enjoyed the finance class that I took. So I ended up getting a finance degree. Got you. So much better decision, not the right timing. Okay. And when I graduated, we were right in the middle of the Great Recession. I had a finance degree. I didn't have any work experience and I ended up delivering sandwiches. So I was working at Jimmy John's, actually it's not right down the road from here. Wow. <laughs> working at Jimmy John's, I was delivering sandwiches to buildings that I felt like I should be working there. Mm. And I always had this sense of there's something more for me to do. There's something more that's out there that's available for me, but I just didn't really quite know how to work it out. And uh, I was living at home with my parents. I overheard my mom on the phone with the relative and she said, you know, I don't really know what Tisha's doing with her life. She's got two degrees, but she's not using either one of them. And Your mama so be telling our business on that phone, don't they? <laughs> oh, they used to grind my gears. 
And it just, it, it rocked me. It rocked me to my core because I said, you know, I do have something to offer. I, I know what I'm doing, even though I'm not doing anything, like I can do something. And so that's what led me to starting a blog. I started a personal finance blog, which led to me starting to help business owners with content, which led to me doing what I do now, which is coaching and teaching as well. Listen, okay, so I love it. <laughs> Y'all strike out what I said earlier. We're gonna put some respect <laughs> on her name. I apologize for that. Um, but that is such a common, I'm going back to you saying you chose Spanish because you were kind of forced to choose mm -hmm. a degree. That is such a common scenario for so many people. I have, you know, friends and classmates that literally were forced to choose a degree and ended up with like interdisciplinary studies mm -hmm. or if it wasn't Spanish, it was English. And it's like, or social work, you know, social, mm -hmm. um, sociology. And I feel like the, the counselors, the staff, the people, you know, at these higher education institutions mm -hmm. are doing such a disservice yeah. to students by giving them half of the half of the story. Like you got to choose a major. Mm -hmm. What's the other half of the sentence? Right. But make sure you choose a major that, that you know you can actually that do you can something actually with. use. That's gonna make sense for this debt that <laughs> you're that now you in. Or that you know what you're gonna that you, know, you have use a plan for. for. Right. Any, I mean anything. That that's yeah. the end of the conversation. Is you have to choose yeah. a major. Here, pick a pick from this exactly. list. Exactly. And so you, it's such an important decision that's not that shouldn't be taken lightly mm -hmm. because aside from you just being young and not really knowing what you what you want to do you are in most yeah. of us go into debt behind these degrees yeah i had $65,000 worth of student loan for debt for a spanish degree for a, for a spanish degree and then the the rest of the finance degree that took me another year and a half to complete and i once again got out i couldn't find a job mm -hmm. and so it was like i had all of this debt i also had credit card debt I had a car loan, so I was just like lost for a while. And um, that was why I'm really glad that I went into, in the personal finance world because mm -hmm. I started learning more about money. And uh, I eventually did get a job. So I got a job with a uh, investment consulting firm, became an investment analyst, and then realized that I didn't really like finance. <laughs> I didn't like the finance world. And I found my love in marketing and in okay. the marketing world. So okay. that's why I made my transition. Okay. Okay. So you're you're in finance mm -hmm. or you studied finance, but you're I don't want to say struggling financially, but you're dealing with your own financial yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can say it. I was struggling that, financially. So how so how does that translate? Like did you start yeah. the blog because you were learning things that you needed personally and now you want to share that with other people? Did like what was the I guess the motive behind the blog? Because that's kind of yeah. what started off this journey that, that you are on? Yeah, so I started the blog mostly to teach what I had learned in college. Okay. And so I was talking about like stocks, just like really impersonal. And then I realized like one day I actually shared my story of the student loan debt that I had and I got the most comments mm -hmm. and the most responses. And I thought, oh, okay, well people wanna know about my money, not like how money works. Not the theory behind it, exactly. but your personal, yeah. So I started sharing more of my personal story um, I started getting out of credit card debt. So as I was doing that, I was sharing a little bit more about that. Um, I started getting picked up by, you know, different outlets, media outlets, and got an opportunity to be in Business Insider because I finally decided to share what was happening with me. And I feel like a lot of people can relate when you are open about what you're going through and you can share, you know, that process and that journey because I was struggling. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a cute process. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it took me a lot of time and a lot of uh, mental energy and effort to, to do that. But that process and what I learned during that, I'm able to take into, you know, basically what I do now. And um, it's just all, it all goes into part of the journey. Yeah. It's so funny that you say that because that, that is the thing, the thing that people mm -hmm. don't want to do, which is be vulnerable, be transparent, share their truth, put their mm -hmm. business out there. That's the thing that starts to give, get you traction, starts to get you attention, starts to probably do the things that you set out to do anyway. Yeah. You're just trying to like beat around the bush with how you're doing it because you don't want nobody in your business. You don't mm -hmm. want the spotlight on you. You don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really what it takes. It's you. Um, I have a, a, a friend in, in media and she says, you know, she used to be the, S, the uh, editor of Essence Magazine and mm -hmm. she always says like, People on the internet who want these features, you want to get picked up by XYZ publication, mm -hmm. the reason you're not is because you're out here trying to keep it cute. Yep. What gets you picked up is you keeping it real. Mm -hmm. And that is your proof of that. It's like when I was trying to keep it cute, I'm just saying, hey, this is what you should do with your investments. Right. These are what the stocks are doing. 
take that. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, the people are like, okay, that's cool. But when you start telling right. your business, the people are like, oh, this is like, not what? just it's juicy, but it's like, okay, she gets me. She's right. not perfect. Yeah. Because that's another thing, too. A lot of times, if you do have that buttoned up, everything is perfect mm-hmm. um, vibe going, whether it's on social yeah. media or whatever, people think you can't relate to them. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm really struggling. So I don't want her to know my business because she's going to judge me, not knowing that you were in right. a similar situation. So for anybody out there that's um, building a brand, especially a personal brand, which everything we're mm-hmm. doing now is, is a personal brand, yep. being okay with being your true self, being vulnerable, because the people who really need you will be attracted to you when you are your true self. Mm-hmm. If you're out here faking, you're gonna attract fake people who are not gonna pay you, mm-hmm. okay? So let's talk about that. <laughs> um, but before we get it off of the finance conversation, yep. because I do have such a large, you know, population of women that are tuned in Mm -hmm. and we just can't seem to get our money together because Mm -hmm. we spending it all I might be just talking about myself give just a couple of finance I don't know like little gems for the ladies of things that they could be doing should be doing to better manage their money because we talk all the time about making money yeah that ain't that's not it though once you make it then what what's step two so I have to come at this from like the the spiritual side okay. because money is spiritual. And so with this, I, I would say that you have to get really good at being okay with keeping money. So it's not just a lot of times like we can make money or we'll, we'll we think that it's all about I got to make more money. I got to make more money. Mm-hmm. But we haven't grounded ourselves in a sense that we're worth keeping the money mm. and sometimes the spending habits and the buying extra things that put you in a financial position that you don't want to be in are more so about a feeling of, I don't deserve to keep the money. And so that's, I guess that's really the only financial tip I can I, I can don't give. deserve. That's <laughs> interesting. Cause yeah. I feel like my, and y'all, y'all know I'll be telling all my little business on here. I feel like my thing mm-hmm. is not, I deserve to keep the money. It's I deserve to have that thing. Mm-hmm. And you do. Which is just as, Toxic well, of, but a, you, of a belief. I, f- I don't think it is, though. I feel like that's something you just have to lean into because your resistance of it is what is the thing that's actually causing the problem. Mm-hmm. So if you lean into it and say, yes, I deserve to have it, and I can choose, do I want this thing now? Do I want it later? Do I want it, you know, do I want to spend this much on it? So when you, you have to bring the power back to yourself, like, yes, I deserve to have it, and... I can choose, do I have it now? Do I have it later? Do I have something that's you know, a little bit more expensive, a little bit less expensive? Um, do I get somebody else to pay for it? Because there's a Come lot on. of opportunities for that on, as husband. well. Come pay for it. <laughs> I, okay, okay, credit card debt. Yeah. Because you said you were in a little bit of credit card mm-hmm. debt. We in, some, we in some credit card debt because mm-hmm. we'd be out here shopping, spending down, okay? Mm-hmm. What is your personal philosophy on paying down debt? So I feel like with personal credit card debt, which is what I was in, I had $22,000 worth of personal credit card debt just from buying this, that, the other, all sorts of things. Um, That was more of a a personal responsibility that I had to learn that if there was something that I wanted, something that I desired, and it was an impulse that I just, you know, I'm here at the store and ooh, that looks good, let me go buy it. I had to cultivate a new responsibility of saying, okay, you didn't come here for that. So if that's something you want, you need to wait, make sure it's something you actually desire, then you can go back and get it. Or, so that was kind of like the first uh, realm of what I had to do. And then the second layer to that was, after I kind of got that spending under control, my next thing was, okay, if you want it, you can get it, but you have to use your debit card. Mm, you have to use, you the use your cash. real money. Exactly. Mm. And then I was like, eh, I, don't I don't really want, want it right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it was just kind of cultivating new habits for myself. And, and I will say business credit and business debt for a di- different conversation because I feel like that's more leverage. That's more mm-hmm. like investing yourself, investing your business. I'm really good at like making an investment and then flipping it, mm-hmm, what I call mm-hmm. it. Um, so that's different from like a personal credit card debt. And I feel like a lot of newer entrepreneurs, a lot of new business owners, they still have this concept of business debt is personal debt and it's not. It's like the business is its own entity and it has the job of recuperating that, recouping that investment and so on and so forth. And then there's a personal spending discipline, personal spending habits that come in along with that. We're just not gonna be able to avoid discipline, right? Yeah. It's just no way around it, <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> All right, nobody wants to hear that, but yeah. okay, that is, it's That's what the name it comes of the game. down to. Yeah. It's what it comes down to, and then you start having kids. 
And it's really a whole nother thing because mm -hmm. my habit of, but I deserve that, turns into, but they deserve, you know, it's like yeah. a trickle down. So I got to get it together before they're old enough to start asking for stuff. Right. And then I'm really in some trouble. <laughs> and daddy really be out here looking for me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I want to talk about high ticket coaching. Yes. Because that's your lane. Mm -hmm. And okay, so I know all about high ticket coaching obviously, but for the sake of the conversation, mm. define what's your definition of high ticket coaching? Yeah. So I feel like the word high ticket gets thrown around a lot. And some people believe that high ticket is, you know, 1500, 3000, 5000. And it is. And at the same time, there's a level to pricing where what we're really going after is a premium product, a premium service, a luxury offering versus just high ticket. Because anybody can put a price on their services and say, oh, I have a high ticket program, I have a high ticket offer, whatever it is. But there's some services that don't come with the same service, the same luxury, the same feeling. And so therefore, it's just, you know, you put a different price on the same thing you were offering. So when it comes to high ticket pricing um, or high ticket offerings, I really like to think of it as a luxury, a premium offering, that is um, specific for a specific client and that provides a specific transformation. And what do you, um, what qualifies it as a high ticket? Like what dollar amount? Uh, in, so it's gonna be different. And the reason I say it's gonna be different is because number one, global community, right? So different people, different places, et cetera, et cetera. So if we're talking about US in general, your high ticket offering is gonna be anywhere from like 10,000 plus. Okay. So I like looking at a five figure offer and it's also gonna depend on timing because some people will say they have a five figure offer, but then it's over the span of like a year or three years. It's like, well. Three years? There's some people who have, yeah, three years. They year. have three year offers? Yeah, I've wow. seen it. And so if you break down like the actual time that's involved and really what you're offering, it's really not premium, it's really not high ticket. So that's really the first thing that I look at. And so when I have the conversation with clients, usually the first thing that we're doing is we're stair-stepping them from whatever price they choose at the start. So I never force anyone to say, okay, you need to price it here or there. Mm -hmm. um, most of the clients that come in to start working with me, they're usually at like 1,500, 2,500. And so our first thing is the easy thing, is like double their rates. And you know, there's a lot, you know, a couple things that we do around that, but it's trying to get them to at least like that five, $5,000 mark mm -hmm. for not a 12 month program for something that's, you know, a very distinct, uh, short-term transformation and so when you have the conversation because this is a very popular conversation it's like mm -hmm. charge your worth and yeah. double your prices today yeah. and and like you said we can slap a hundred thousand dollar price tag on a honda that does not make it a bentley that does exactly. not turn it like transform it into something that it's not just because you've put this price tag on it mm -hmm. so what is the other part of that conversation that you, I know you have, you know, the other yeah. part of your conversation with your clients, but for the sake of the people who yeah. don't necessarily have you as a coach yet, what <laughs> do you say on the other side of that? Yeah. How do you validate this doubled price? Yeah. So what do you advise? So the first thing that we do is make sure we're splitting the concept of the pricing and the investment from their worth. Okay. So I will never tell my clients charge what you're worth because they can it's never impossible. afford you. Exactly. You get to receive money as a result of your energy, your expectation, and your vibration. That's it. Some people expect more, some people expect less. Some people vibrate at different levels and other people vibrate. So you get to receive. You're never charging what you're worth, you're always charging what your services are worth. So when you think about that, you're like, okay, what is this service actually worth? What result is it bringing to the, to the client? Um, what's the transformation? How does their life change? What other areas are affected by this? So we go through this entire process to really determine what are the tangible changes and outcomes? What are the intangible changes and outcomes? And once they go through that exercise, they're like, wow. I really got something here. Yeah, this could be like 30, 40, $50,000. I'm like, okay, great. So would, would you be okay charging 5,000 for it? They're like, yeah, that's only 10% of it. So, you know, really once you go through it and really determine like what is the service actually worth, you can get better at, at pricing it. So, okay, part one, you need to increase your prices. Part mm -hmm. two, let's really look at the transformation we're providing and yep. see what that, what the value is that we can attach to that. Part three is the mindset. Cause yeah. it could sound all good mm -hmm. all day. Yeah, and then you get on the phone with somebody, and you change it. And baby, that is five hundred. It's whatever <laughs> right. I think you're gonna say yep. yes to. I'm immediately questioning myself, mm -hmm. especially that first conversation. It's yep. like, girl, I'm still trying to convince myself yeah. that I can even say this number. Mm -hmm. So, how do you coach your clients through that process? Yeah, 
So the first thing that we really look at is we get dive deep into their why. Because a lot of times, especially women, we'll do things for other people before we do them for ourselves. So we always have a conversation around what's your why? And often they'll say something like, well, I wanna show my kids it's possible, or I want to you know, do this for my family, or I wanna, like there's you know, any X, Y, Z number of reasons. Mm -hmm. So once they get clear on that, it's like, okay, now there's something outside of myself that I can kind of hang my hat on on that, and then I can be okay presenting this price. And so we get deep into the why, then we get deep into, okay, what is your true message? Like you're here to deliver a message. So what's that message? If you, you know, if you only had a couple of words to tell to your client, like what would you tell them, regardless of the money, regardless of the pricing, and is that valuable? And you know, these conversations are obviously why we have continued coaching and mm -hmm, conversations mm -hmm. over and over again, because it's like these little subconscious blocks that come up during that process. And the reason why, you know, they might have one price in their head, and then when they go to say it, they'll say something else. And it's like, well, you know, you changed it at the last second because there was something, some mental conversation mm -hmm. that was going on. What was that conversation? And then we can kind of pinpoint it on that. And we've had the conversation several times here on the show about mm -hmm. imposter syndrome yeah. and just, that, 100%, I think that's a woman thing. Because mm -hmm. these men, I yeah. mean, they will have half of the skills <laughs> charging triple the price right. without hesitation. Yep. Like, without hesitation. Mm -hmm. And will look at you like you crazy if you look at them like they crazy. Yep. We're the other way around. We have all of the skills yeah. and none of the confidence behind mm -hmm. it. Like, we can do all of the things. We can hype other people up. Mm -hmm. We can sit on the sideline and cheer for all of our homegirls. Yep. But when they give us the ball, we start looking around like, but wait a minute, right? I'm not made for Should this, I, or I can't do it. Yeah, I don't belong mm -hmm. here. And so I think that we do ourselves such a disservice when we do not understand our worth mm -hmm. um, and then are able to communicate it. And this spans personal stuff, yeah. professional stuff, because the same way you show up on that coaching, on the sales call, mm -hmm. it's probably the same way you're gonna show up on the first date, not understanding your worth, yeah. not really being able to communicate what you desire, um, you know, even though it's not a, price tag but these mm -hmm. are these are the requirements you know to be in a relationship with me or to you know be yeah. in my presence it translates so we got to do better y'all yeah. need therapy we all we need therapy we all need therapy. <laughs> I, i'm an advocate for therapy okay yeah, because same. it could literally be stopping you from your money yeah and your man okay so get it together now i do want to talk a little bit about your um i think you have a four-step framework i saw about mm -hmm. that you work with your clients on and yep. we don't want to give them all the game because y'all do have to go to our website check it out for yourself but can you talk a little bit about your specific coaching style because yeah. high ticket is a pretty popular concept everybody mm -hmm. has their own definition everybody has their own kind of methodology what's your special sauce when yes. it comes to high ticket so a lot of it goes into um, that assume the throne process. Mm. So assuming the throne is about recognizing that you've done enough, you are enough, and it's time for you to, to step up. It's time for you to, to step into that next level version of yourself. So the first thing that we do in that is we actually declare and decree, like this is what I want, and this is why I deserve it, and this is what I desire, period. Uh, and it's essentially like creating a proclamation as if you were a king, queen, like creating that proclamation. Um, and then the second thing that we do from there is we start looking at um, filling your court. Okay, so it's like, okay, who do I need in my corner? Who are the people who are going to be there for me, who are going to uh, be able to support me and, and be part of that process? And um, then from there, we go into, you know, just really helping you assume the throne. Like, what are the day-to-day -day things that you need to do? Um, what are the pieces and things that you need to put in place so that you're ready to do this on a daily basis? You know, is it about getting uh, featured? Is it about, uh, you know, bringing certain uh, team members on? Like, what support do you need in order for you to really step into that, that, that queen nature of yourself or that, that king nature of yourself? Do you work with men? Um, I do also. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I have men in my audience. Yeah, Hell yeah. Girl, I would be like, uh -uh, sorry, fellas, just watch the podcast. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry, that's all I got for you. Yeah. But okay, put that out there. You work yeah. with men and women, so yes. men, you can assume the throne also. Even though y'all be on that throne, y'all don't. Right. Y'all don't be struggling like we be struggling, but we gonna get it together. Letitia is gonna get us together. Um, what would you say separates you from other coaches? That's a great question. So before I answer it. I had uh, someone ask me that question several years ago and I couldn't answer it. And I remember getting frustrated because I couldn't answer it because I was like, well, I'm different just like because like I'm different. Like you know it, right? Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of times people do have issues with that question. So I guess I kind of want to give a little bit of coaching before I even answer it, which is you're, 
you're special because you're you. And I know that kind of seems like a, you know, it could be like a woo woo, like whatever. Rainbows and yeah, but like the reason that someone will work with me versus working with someone else who literally might do the same thing is because they're coming for Letitia. Like they're coming for that essence. They're coming for the thing that they can get from me that they can't get from anybody else. So I will say that as a little bit of coaching. But as far as like what's my unique selling proposition, like what makes me unique is the fact that I don't just look at the practical. I don't just look at, okay, here are the things we need to put in place for your marketing. Like I'm always looking at what's underneath the surface. What are the subconscious blocks that are gonna prevent you from doing the thing that you said you wanted to do? Like what is underneath the surface and how can we work on those things so you can have success, not just in this, but also whatever else you wanna do. Because with my clients, I really wanna look at all areas of their life. A lot of clients come to me for money, they come to me for business, but like I wanna look at other stuff too because it all matters. And I don't know if we're gonna um, have a conversation about this, but part of what allowed me to uh, enjoy like one of the highest revenue months in my business was the fact that I did a fitness competition. That has mm. nothing to do with business, but because I was taking care of another area of my life that was really important to me, it allowed me to expand in my business and you know with that as well. A thousand percent. We try yeah. to disconnect the things, but as you were speaking, I'm like, girl, are you a life coach? Yeah. You a business coach? But like you said, it <laughs> yeah. is because you can have it all together. You can have the blueprint for mm -hmm. this business. But baby, if that man start cutting up, yep. if something happens with one of your kids, if something happens with a parent, if mm -hmm. something happens personally in your life, it's going to impact your life, yep. the entire life, especially if you are an entrepreneur. And I think for women, it's so easy to think of times that we were mm -hmm. in like a bad relationship and literally everything we touched seems to like just it, mm -hmm. it wasn't working out because of this thing we were dealing with yep. and so like you said you can't disconnect it not with women at least because we are emotional mm -hmm. so if we're sad because something's going on over here it's gonna spill into our business yep. there's like no way around it so I love that you mentioned that and what I was thinking mm -hmm. that was unique about you which is kind of what you said when I asked you um, about the money and mm -hmm. you said well first of all money is spiritual yeah that to me is unique because there are so many coaches that mm -hmm. you know are not necessarily by the book but they want to only focus on the business part mm -hmm. of it they don't want to mention God they don't want to talk about spirituality they mm -hmm. don't want to talk about the fact that money is energy you know all of the all of the things so I I think yeah, I think it's a whole lot, a whole lot well, that you're bringing. This I learned special. that, like I learned that really early on because one of the very first clients that I had, we went directly into how to. We went into the practical, and I got my feelings hurt because I saw her working with another coach a little mm. bit later, and I remember reaching out to her and I asked her, and she said, "Well, I don't even want to do the thing that you and I were working on. I realized that I actually have a passion for this other thing." And meanwhile, I'm thinking, well, we didn't even, I didn't even ask you what you wanted to do. I, you came to me and said, this is what you want to do. So I said, okay, let's go. And now I've learned from that, I don't do that. We actually have a conversation like, is this actually what you want to do? And we talk more holistically because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll see you the clients. Waste my time. Yeah, they go, you know, they're working with someone else who does understand that level. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have quit coaching so many times. I have a yeah. mentorship program right now, which what's the difference? I couldn't tell you. I feel like I'm still back doing the same thing. But it's draining. Yeah. And it's draining and it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. The drain is I really care about you. Yep. So I really want to help you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes more than you want to help yourself. Yep. And I can't do certain things for myself because mm -hmm. I'm focused on trying to help you. How do you balance that part of it? Like how do you still build your business when you have, and I don't know what your capacity is for yeah. the clients, but you have five, 10 other mm -hmm. people who you're working to build their businesses too. Yeah, I, so I'm an empath and I'm all about, I'm giving back the energy that I'm feeding off of. Mm -hmm. So for example, my one-on-one -on -one clients, which I usually take on like three to four one-on-one -on -one clients at a time, um, those, those interactions always light me up because okay. we're always like, they're like, hey, let's go, let's do it. And it's very exciting. And so what I've had to do is I just create different containers. So I've got my one-on-one -on -one container, which is like full energy exchange. Then I have my group container, which is a different type of energy exchange. And I'm still there, but it, there's still a little bit of distance of, because you can't want it more for someone than they want it for themselves. And you'll notice, and I'm sure for those of you who have been in group programs, people will notice that there are certain people who don't show up. There's certain people who do show up. There's certain people who are, you know, everyone has their own flow, which mm -hmm. is fine. 
but there's just different containers for everything. And then obviously I have like uh, DIY, like courses and things like that for people who just like, just give me the information. I want to make passive income, you know, just whatever. Give it up. Yeah, just here okay. you go. <laughs> so you don't drive yourself crazy because you put people into different containers. Exactly. You have figured it out, girl. Mm. Okay, got you. So I do want to talk about your course. We linked yep. it down below for the people. Look into this camera right here yep. and let them know like what they can expect from the course. I know this little baby is a part of what you have, but let them know what they can look for. Yeah, sure. So the Seven Figure Messenger three-day intensive is a live program. It's a three-day live program and essentially is virtual, but essentially what we do is we go into determining what do you actually desire? So every client gets a copy of Dream Decide Do, which is my manifestation goal planner. And it's really like setting the foundation of what do you desire and what do you want in your life and how does that show up? So we start with kind of going below the surface. And then the next thing that we do uh, on day two is we really talk about monetizing like the seven figure messenger. I call it the seven figure messenger, regardless of what your financial goal is, because if you have a clear message, the money gets to come as a result of you stepping out there and walking out your purpose and stepping into your calling. And then on the final day, we really bring it all together, help you assume the throne, step into that new identity. And um, it's really good feels, it's really good vibes. It's one of my favorite programs and I'm really excited to deliver it. So I'd love to have you in it if it calls to you. Yes, down below, I will link it. Um, but even if that's not the one for you, go to her website. I was on that thing. I, you have a tab that's like tech, and yeah, tools. Yeah. I was all down that page. Like, okay, <laughs> great resources. Okay, yeah. regardless, like something is gonna, you know, feel good for you when you check out her website. She's good vibes, y'all. I'm feeling the vibes. Okay, so if you are a spirit led person, you know, you have to feel people out. Definitely log on, check her out. If something that she said during this conversation moves you, check your girl out. Um, a for I, I want to say you have some affordable things. I know I there's do. a ladder. Cause you ain't the hot ticket coach if you ain't hot ticket okay so we know we she got some luxury on there as well but she has something for everybody so get in where you fit in based on your level of comfort right now which is usually how people start yep. um investing to kind of try you out see see your flow see how it feels um but i think that y'all are gonna love it and i can't wait to hear from you how your mindset has changed how you have started to figure out your messaging and how you're starting to assume the throne and put some respect on your own name, okay? <laughs> Letitia, I have enjoyed this conversation. I Amen. appreciate the help that you didn't even know that you were giving me today as well as last night because yeah. I did pick up some gems on your website. Awesome. And y'all, I'm going to be doing these business spotlight interviews all season long. So if you're interested in coming down to the studio or connecting virtually for an interview so that you can promote your black-owned, woman-owned, either or or both business then definitely um hit us up girlstopplaying.com make sure y'all follow letitia on instagram at letitia styles anything else that they need to know you can look right in that camera and let them know that's it if you if you want to come cheer me on i'll be doing a fitness competition in may yes wait <laughs> let's talk about the fitness competition yeah tell us what in the world when i see y'all doing this so stuff the five k's the fitness competition <laughs> i'm like that look real good but yeah. girl what was the motivation? I cannot. My So my motivation was I knew I wanted to get the body that I wanted along with the business that I wanted. Okay. And so my three things was I wanted a, a business, a booty, and a boo. Okay. And okay. so I got all three. Okay. So High five, all three. Yes. <laughs> but the fitness competition unlocked this for you? Yeah, that did. And I did my first one in 2020. So I'll be doing my third one in May. It's going to be in L.A., and uh, I'm really excited about it. So you got a Buddhist all, he in the competition yeah. too? Well, he doesn't, he doesn't compete. Oh, okay, okay, okay. He's but like, you learned him stage, during the journey. No, I mean, you met him during the journey. No, 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 no. I met him before. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. We've been together for, we've been together for a while. He cheers me on. He's excited about it. it. He wouldn't get on stage. He's but, like, no, yeah. but, <laughs> no, but yes. I love that for you. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So LA, May. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is there a way to like watch virtually or you just have to yeah, be there? You okay. can go to uh, WBFFshows.com and I'm sure we can put the link in the show notes mm -hmm, so they can mm -hmm. go uh, watch it like pay-per-view. But yeah, I'll I be in there. I love that. You'll be in that yeah. thing. Well, congratulations Thank in you. advance. <laughs> Good luck to you. And make sure y'all are following her at Letitia Styles on Instagram because I'm sure you'll keep us posted there. Absolutely. Thank you for coming yes. on. I appreciate you. I enjoyed you. And y'all. Like this video, comment below, let me know something that you learned, and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any bomb content. See you on the next episode.